you little I touch you! It's all just j- just an act. Stop! 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 He's already dead. Ladies, gentlemen, and druids of all ages, it's honestly crazy how fast it is to get a new character online in Diablo 4 Season 2. I decided to try out starting on Rogue for a bit for this season, and I enjoyed my time over there, but now it is of course time to get my own personal main online, which is of course the Druid. And man, it only took me a couple of days to actually do this, whereas this used to take like nearly a week to get a full proper endgame build up and running from level 1 before. All that aside though, the build that I wanted to start off with while showing you all for Druid is really fun, and something that I've been looking forward to making this season. It's not Boulder, not quite yet, we'll get to there, I want a few more uniques before I put together that beautiful concept. No, this one is actually a new and improved crone basic skill build for season 2, and is considered one of the strongest druid builds around right now. In season 1 and preseason, there was a fun build where you basically used other than bulwark as your main damage skill, because it was, you know, bugged, and then just built yourself to spam as many basic skills as quickly as possible to reduce the cooldown on bulwark so that you could spam it as much as you could. They fixed the damage of bulwark so that doesn't work anymore. But Season 2 is all about attack speed, honestly, if you consider what the vampiric powers can give us, really. And as it turns out, that old build has created the bones of something extremely strong for Season 2, where the actual damage focus is entirely on your basic attacks themselves, but with a lot more of the same concepts from before built in around it to make it even stronger. That said, we are going to dive into all the skill points for this and where we put them, the legendaries and uniques within the build, the spirit boons of choice, of course, our vampiric powers, our paragon board setup, and then just any tips that I have for anyone new to playing this style of build. Starting off with skill points then, we are going hard on ranks of two basic skills. Claw is the one that you'll be actually casting the most, max out its ranks, and then you want to grab Enhanced Claw as well for bonus attack speed on this skill itself, and then Wild Claw for a 15% chance to claw to attack twice when you cast it. Then, because this build hinges around the great staff of the Crone Unique, we also take full ranks in Storm Strike, as well as Enhanced Storm Strike for a mobilized chance on this skill as well, and then also Fierce Storm Strike for a vulnerable application chance which is quite high. With this, every time that you cast Claw, it will also cast Storm Strike with all these bonus effects and bonus damage on it too. Not to mention the bonus attack speed on Claw itself and the double strike chance that that has. Then in your core skill node cluster, we are going to be taking exclusively just a couple of passives. There is no active core in use in this build. And we're going to be grabbing three ranks of Predatory Instinct for 6% bonus crit chance against close enemies, and then three ranks of Digitigrade Gate for 9% bonus move speed in wolf form, which we will be in constantly. Then moving on to your defensive node cluster is where this build really starts to take form. Take one rank in or the Bulwark for an on-demand barrier, take its enhancement to make it also give you unstoppable while it's active, then you should take innate earthen bulwark. This is a low portion of your damage now, they fixed the old bugs, but it does still boost your damage a bit and it gives you a constant barrier and unstoppable procs too. Then we take one rank in cyclone armor here just for a nice little bit of passive all resist with an active that you can trigger to force a knockback. Enhanced cyclone armor gives the knockback portion also applying a slow and preserving cyclone armor gives you 2 seconds of 30% damage reduction once every 10 seconds, just a little bit of occasional bonus protection. Then we'll also be taking Blood Howl, which gives you a nice healthy heal on cast, enhanced Blood Howl as well, which makes the cooldown of the skill be reduced by 1 for every kill that you get during this, and then you also take Preserving Blood Howl, which gives you 15% bonus attack speed for 4 seconds after you cast the skill, which funnels into all of our other attack speed bonuses, and this is active pretty consistently because of the cooldown reduction too. After that we're going to be grabbing 3 ranks of the Ancestral Fortitude passive for 15% all element resist, then 3 ranks of Vigilance as well for what amounts to 15% damage reduction permanently, as we will be casting one of our 3 different defensive skills within every 6 seconds, no doubt about it. Then we just ignore the companion cluster completely and move over to the Wrath Node cluster. Here you'll want to be grabbing Hurricane for a long lasting circular aura of damage around you, as well as Enhanced Hurricane which makes enemies within that aura also be slowed. Then you want to take Savage Hurricane which gives you a 20% damage reduction on any enemy that is within Hurricane's radius. Then we're just going to be grabbing a bunch of passives, one rank in Elemental Exposure, just as a gateway to let us get three ranks of Endless Tempest for increased Hurricane and Cataclysm duration, which may sound a little bit odd of a choice in the build I've described so far, but I will explain it later on, don't worry. Then three ranks as well of Bad Omen for a 30% lucky hit chance when hitting a vulnerable enemy to make a lightning bolt come down and whack them in the face. This enables one of our Paragon Glyphs later on, which actually does quite a bit for us. Then we get 
one rank in the Neurotoxin passive here, which applies a slow to any enemy that you poison. We also take one rank of Toxic Claws to make all werewolf skills apply poison for a percentage of their damage when you crit with them, which of course includes Claw itself. And then we take three ranks of Envenom over here for a 30% increased crit damage multiplier against poisoned enemies. Then moving on to the ultimate node cluster, we're just going to be taking Petrify here, which is just a really big bonus crit damage increase, which is also a stun on lower level enemies, and it just is a lovely seal to have in general. Then also we're going to be taking the Prime Petrify upgrade just for a slightly longer duration on the effect. We ignore the final upgrade here though, as we don't care about spirit generation, so this doesn't actually help us at all. Then for passives, we're going to be grabbing two ranks of the Defiance passive, which gives you 8% bonus nature magic skill damage against elites, and then three ranks of Natural Disaster for 12% more damage with storm magic skills against immobilized, stunned, or knocked back enemies. Then with our final skill point, we have our key passive, for which we are actually going with Nature's Fury for a 30% chance when casting an Earth or Storm Magic skill to trigger a free skill from the same cluster. We use this with our insane attack speed as a method of proccing cooldown reduction, which really boosts up the survivability of the build quite significantly. With that covered then, let's talk about our spirit boons. In the deer path, you want of course to be taking wariness for 10% reduced damage from elites. In the eagle path, you want scythe talons for extra 5% crit chance. In the wolf path, you either want bolster, which gives you a bunch of fortify when you cast a defensive skill, so this is quite good for survivability, or for offense, you instead want Calamity, which extends the duration of your ultimate skills by 25%. Then finally, you want to bond with the Snake Path, and here we're going to be taking Overload, which gives you 40% lucky hit chance on lightning damage to cause a small explosion around your enemy, then also Calm Before the Storm for 10% lucky hit chance with Nature Magic skills to reduce your ultimate cooldown by 2 seconds. After that, let's talk about our legendaries and our uniques as well. First and foremost, of course, being the Great Staff of the Crone. This makes your Claw also cast Storm Strike as a bonus cast, also making it do a bunch of bonus damage. On top of that, it gives you a ton of claw ranks and makes claw count as a storm skill as well. This is the only thing at all that is actually required to make this build work. Even the legendaries are swappable with other ones to make a weaker version of this if you want to, but this unique is an absolute requirement. Past that, if you happen to have it for yourself, Tybalt's Will is of course just best in slot for this build. This build does not lack survivability, so dropping a defensive aspect slot to gain up to 40% damage active just constantly is crazy, especially as a multiplier. Keep in mind as well that we are constantly resetting the cooldown of Earthen Bulwark, which gives us constant unstoppable, and I might as well mention now that we are doing that with the symbiotic aspect over here on our boots to reduce non-ultimate cooldowns when you proc our key passive. Past that, one more unique that I have in here is actually Zafal's Corroded Signet. We apply a fair bit of poison damage, and this turns poison damage over time into explosions of instant damage in an area, which is a fantastic way to synergize with what this build is already doing to just add more speed and group clearing. Past that, in our amulet slot for 50% bonus effectiveness, we're going to be having the rapid aspect for up to 45% bonus attack speed on your basic skills, which of course are our main source of damage, so increasing the attack speed means more damage. Then we have the overcharge aspect on a ring here. I have an unfortunate low roll on this, but this is an up to 20% lucky hit chance when dealing lightning damage to overload an enemy, causing them to pulse out damage around them for 3 seconds afterwards. Then on our gloves is going to be the edge master's aspect. It just sort of makes sense. We never use our spirit, so this will always have its full 20% bonus damage for our basic skills and our cooldowns. Past that, we just have our defensive legendary slots. Vigorous is awesome. This is just a consistent up to 15% damage reduction because we will always be in wolf form. Disobedience is absolutely fantastic against actual physical damage, which is really important. And then of course we just have might as well for a bonus, just consistent 20% damage reduction because we are constantly using our basic attacks. As far as the type of stats that you want to aim for then, crit chance, attack speed, lucky hit chance, crit damage are your general main ones to aim for for this, as well as damage to close enemies. Vulnerable damage is nice, basic skill attack speed is great, and so is cooldown reduction as well. Defensively, you just sort of want the standard stuff. Bonus maximum life, bonus armor, and also you want to make sure you take care of your resistances so you aren't getting one shot by elements. Moving on then to our vampiric powers then, you can see we have some beautiful synergy going on right now, and here is where I get to explain the fun of the build a bit more. First we have Ravenous. This is an incredible power, giving you a high lucky hit chance to increase your attack speed relative to your total movement speed, which for me right now at a low end is a 50% increase, but this gets higher in combat, and that is just massively more damage. We also take Moonrise as a major power for consistently active 20% attack speed bonus and massive damage boost to basic skills, as well as a bit of a bonus move speed for Ravenous to feed off of as well. Then we're going to be taking Undying, which heals you for 3% health every time you cast a skill. Our attack speed is ridiculous, so our healing from this ability is of course very silly. After that, we're going to be grabbing Hectic. Every 5 basic skills that you cast reduces one of your active cooldowns by 2 seconds. This is entirely in the build as a way to manage Petrify. Petrify as an ultimate is extremely powerful, but 
its worst trait is its cooldown, and it can't be affected by the symbiotic aspect. The idea of this build is that we use symbiotic to bring all of our other skills off cooldown faster, which then lets all the hectic procs apply specifically to petrify as an ultimate, and let you get much more frequent periods of bonus damage from that ultimate. Then your last slot is a bit of a personal choice. Personally, I really like to go with metamorphosis, just because I enjoy having more on-demand unstoppable procs and think it makes the game more comfortable to play in general, and it's really nice on your dodge. With that covered, let's talk about our Paragon board setup for this build. On the first board here, they're all really valuable nodes around here, so you just want to grab all the rare nodes and the magic nodes as well, as they're just really, really good. In the glyph socket itself, you want to put in the exploit glyph for bonus damage to vulnerable enemies, then you just want to grab the dexterity glyphs in the radius as well, and then head up the left side to the exit so you can attach on the heightened malice board on its default rotation. You want to head up the left side here and progress through the rare and magic nodes at the bottom left, stopping at the glyph socket to stick in the territorial glyph for tons of bonus damage against close targets and also damage reduction from close targets too. Grab all the dexterity and the radius once again to fuel this for silly numbers, then you want to head out the left side exit of the board here and attach on the inner beast board with the legendary power on the left side. From here you want to progress right into the middle to get to the glyph socket itself, and here you actually want to be putting in the fang and claw glyph to boost the nearby magic nodes and also give you 12% increased damage against close enemies while you're in wolf or bear form. Then you want to grab the nearby rare and magic nodes as well as just enough willpower to activate the glyph itself. Then we're going to be quickly wrapping around the bottom here to get this collection of rare and magic nodes that boost your attack speed because attack speed is just of course incredibly important to us, possibly even our individually most important stat. After that you want to progress out of the top of the board here, getting the rare armor increase node here along the way, and then you want to put on the thunderstruck board with the legendary power in the top right corner of that board. Head up and left to get the glyph socket itself through the rare magic nodes, picking them up along the way, and here you want to stick in the electrocution glyph. This is a new one in season 2 and it's actually pretty damn good. This increases the damage of lightning bolts, which we have lucky hit chance to summon against vulnerable enemies, so we do actually proc these pretty constantly. And also as an additional effect, this makes any enemy that is hit by a lightning bolt take 20% more damage from you for 5 seconds. Essentially a bonus vulnerable proc in value, get the remaining nearby rare and magic nodes as well, and then you want to take the willpower path out of the top and progress through the middle of the board and the rare and magic nodes that are there until you get to the legendary power of this board, which is Thunderstruck. This makes it so you have increased damage on your storm skills equal to 20% of your total damage versus close and damage versus distant bonuses. Head up and grab the nearby rare and magic nodes as well for all the value that they provide. Then you want to head out of the right side of the board here, sticking on the constructing tendrils board with the legendary power in the bottom left as well as the glyph socket as well. From here, you want to head to the glyph socket very directly and stick in the spirit glyph, which gives you bonus critical damage, but also gives you a damage modifier increase that stacks on an enemy the more times that you crit them, which lends itself extremely well to our style of gameplay. Get the surrounding rare and magic nodes as well, then you want to wrap around the right side of the board through all these lovely rare and magic nodes too, then be able to grab the legendary power itself, which is a 15% lucky hit chance with nature magic skills to immobilize and poison the enemy that you hit. From here, we actually now want to exit out the bottom of this board, which reconnects you to the top side of the heightened malice board from the beginning, and here you just want to wrap around as quickly as possible using all of your remaining points to get the legendary node, which gives you 45% increased damage as a multiplier while there are three or more poison enemies nearby, which of course is just constant in this build. That does it for everything then as far as how to put the build itself together, so how about how to play it? Well, Cyclone Armor is there pretty much just as a passive, you don't actually want to put it on cooldown ever because it gets in the way of things. Hurricane you want to keep active with our cooldown reset shenanigans, it will be ready before it's actually finished its duration, so you don't want to actually overuse it, you just want to use it as it's running out. Earthen Bulwark you essentially want to use on cooldown just to refresh your barrier amount, and the same goes for Blood Howl for the attack speed. Other than that, you just want to spam basic attacks on your enemies. The more grouped up they are, the better. The reason for our usage priority is that Hectic can reset cooldowns on any skill that is on cooldown. So if we never actually use Cyclone Armor, if we rarely use Hurricane without it being off cooldown anyways, that means the majority of the time it will only be affecting Blood Howl, Earthen Bulwark, or Petrify. We have the symbiotic aspect to make Earthen Bulwark on cooldown just much less frequently by resetting it easily, and Blood Howl resets its own cooldown as you kill enemies. As a result, more often than not, the hectic cooldown reduction procs will hit Petrify as intended, and of course Petrify is just your big damage increase cooldown, which also has a 30% chance to summon Cataclysm when you cast it within this build, and that is part of why we put the extra bit of pointage into Endless Tempest in the skill tree earlier. Not only does it mean that we cast Hurricane less often, meaning more of our hectic procs can hit Petrify, but we also have that chance to summon Cataclysm on Petrify, and the passive makes it last longer as well. So it's just all really solid stuff, really. And that just about does it then, everyone. A full breakdown of this 
this new build variation popping up in Season 2 and my take on how to make it as strong as possible. I have always loved these style of cooldown, reduction, super fast attack speed, spam druid builds, but of course it has never been better than it currently is in Season 2, unless of course you count the whole bugged bulwark shenanigans, but comparing this, which is so clearly not a bug to something that is, is just not fair. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this build then, and I hope you enjoyed playing it for yourself too if you give it a go, because I know I am. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye